Welcome to another episode of Ask Professor V. And this episode is thanks to Josue, who sent me three questions. I love them all, so I'll be answering all three in this video today. First one says, have you ever had a student make the biggest academic comeback, as in having the worst grades in class to the best? Yes, this has happened several times. I think most often it happens in calculus two, and this was the case, especially right when we returned to in-person classes and teaching after we had to switch to remote during COVID-19. And so a lot of students were lacking the proper foundation, especially in Calc 1. Um, they didn't retain the material. They got too used to or didn't benefit from online learning. So switching to in-person was a big um, transition for them and a lot of them struggled. So I had several students who did really poorly on the first exam. And then that just lit a fire in them. They started coming to office hours, changing up their study habits, really working diligently, putting in that extra time to fill in the gaps from Calc 1. And they ended up getting A's. I could think of like several that that happened with. And the thing to take away from that is it doesn't happen magically. It doesn't happen because they crammed really hard for a week. These were people who weren't happy with their performance after the first exam, usually after the first assessment. And then they decided to do something dramatically different in how they studied and how they approached the class and how much time they put forth towards working um, and studying and it paid off. So my advice would be if you're not happy with how you're doing in a class and it's early enough, figure out what you need to change so that you can get yourself out of that rut. Obviously, I don't recommend starting off in a rut, right? It's better to just start off strong and not have to dig yourself out of a hole the rest of the semester. But some people, they just need that F on that first test to inspire them or something. I don't know what it is. Or it's not always their fault. They've maybe had a long break since their last math class or what have you. So it is possible. Also, the way I structure my classes, the exams make up the largest component of the overall course grade, the final exam especially. So just because you didn't do very well on the first exam does not mean you're like doomed the rest of the semester. Okay, I hope that answered your question there. Oh, I was thinking about a student. This wasn't a turnaround that happened within one semester, but this example always, I thought, was so powerful. I had a student, he had come back after taking a long break from school, and so he was placed into Calc 1. This was a spring semester, I wanna say almost over 10 years ago. And he was working so hard, but doing so poorly. And I, my heart really went out to him because it was the basic algebra that was tripping him up. Factoring, laws of exponents, all that sort of stuff. So after, I think the second exam, he stuck around for a while, didn't do well, decided to drop and asked me what advice I had. And I said, you know, it doesn't seem like you're struggling learning the concepts that are from calculus itself, but it's the algebra that's holding you back. Why don't you take the summer, take intermediate algebra? Because I think he had already passed pre-calc, right? Years and years ago, so you can't repeat a course. So I said, take intermediate algebra, it'll just be eight weeks, and that should be enough to refresh your skills so that you can come back and then just focus on the calculus and you won't get tripped up on your laws of exponents or working with radicals. There's no trig, but Eh, I felt like it was it would work and sure enough he did it a lot of the times I've told students to go back and take a lower class and they don't want to hear it they're in a rush I have to transfer soon whatever whatever but he was serious about it so he went and did it and wouldn't you know a plus solid the whole semester in the fall when he retook calc with me because that was literally what was holding him back was his algebra skills and it's very normal if you take a break from math for I would say even more than a few months you're gonna forget things that you learned. That's not the same with your other courses. Like if you take a break from taking an English class, you're not gonna forget how to read or write, <laughs> right? Math is completely different. So unless you're using it regularly, you will forget it, okay? Fix it though. So that's human nature, fix it if you wanna do better. And he did. What a champion, so inspiring. Okay, next question. Have you ever caught a student cheating on a test? I mean, Josue, yes, all the time. <laughs> Not so much lately. 
Um, I don't know, either I've gotten better at discouraging cheating or they're good and I don't notice it. But um, I would say over the years, I've as experiences have occurred and I've had students cheat, then I've changed up my policies and the way I give exams especially. So probably one of my first semesters teaching, I knew to do multiple versions of exams, but I just let students sit wherever they wanted. And so it was the final exam. I think this was just like an algebra class. And you know that time when everybody kind of starts handing in their exam and it's a little hectic? This boyfriend and girlfriend, I'm suspecting they switched tests at that point. And he was always doing way better than her. And he, he like filled in half her final for her. How do I suspect this? Because like there was a dramatic handwriting switch. But I didn't see it with my own eyes. I knew they sat next to each other and I knew they were a couple. But I had a hard time, you know, I couldn't really do much because I hadn't witnessed it to make my case to prove it. So after that, I said, all right, we got to do sitting charts during exams. And that's worked out pretty well just because usually students who are trying to cheat, you know, have a note card or want to have their phone or do something shady with their friends. They want to sit like in the back or on the sides by a wall. Um, so the seating chart helps with that. Another thing, one time I had um, students working and I would used to give scratch paper out. And then again, when it kind of gets hectic and a lot of people start getting up and handing in their tests, he handed off his scratch paper to his friend with the solutions to some of the problems. So I caught him, I did. But after that I said, oh, let's just not do scratch paper anymore. So what I do for my exams is everything's photocopied single-sided and it's just one page, um, one problem per page. So you have a whole front and a back of the page for one problem, but no scratch paper. Other things too, um, most of the time my exams are no calculator. If there is a calculator, take the lid off, take your watch off if it's a smart watch. All the items have to be in the front of the room, this, that, and the other. But I mean, kids still try. There's always, you know, note cards here, cell phones here. I've had a note card um, in someone's bosom before. That was interesting. No bathroom breaks, you know, but it happens. What can I do? Um, I try to discourage it. I try to make it so it's not like a free for all during test time, but it's inevitable. I had one of my very first university professors. He was such a character. I'll tell you more stories about him one day. But he gave us this speech on the first day of class. And I still remember it because I hadn't thought of cheating this way ever. He said, if you're going to cheat in my class, please do it so I can't tell. Because I really hate dealing with cheaters. You disgust me. If you're a cheater, that is how you basically run your life or how you operate through daily activities. If you're going to cheat in school, that means you just cheat whenever you can. You most likely cheat on your taxes you cheat on your boyfriend or girlfriend, and frankly, I wanna have nothing to do with you. And I hadn't ever thought of it that way. I mean, it was a very extreme statement to make to a class, but there's a ring of truth to it because definitely there were times when I was in school, I wasn't prepared, right? I hadn't studied properly or enough or whatever, but it never occurred to me to cheat. So, I don't know, some people there are of a different breed. I can't stop them completely, especially when they leave my class, who knows what they do, but I just try my best to maintain an honest and fair testing environment in classroom. I wish everyone all the best. Oh, well. Um, and then last question, this one's good. What is your advice to students who feel like their peers are far smarter and feel like they don't belong there? Well, I have I have a couple questions then. So why do you feel like your peers are smarter? Is it just because they participate more in class? Like they're more engaged, they're louder, they're less shy than you? So if that's the case, that might just be a difference in personalities, right? Everybody behaves differently and feels differently in front of a crowd, in front of their peers, participating in class. I wouldn't necessarily say just because someone's more vocal, that means that they're smarter. I have some kids who just like to blurt out stuff all the time and more than 50% of the time they're wrong. Some are shameless. So it just because they're more vocal does not mean that they're necessarily smarter or better prepared for the class. If it does seem like they know more, who's to say it's their first time taking the class? What if they're repeating it? Do you know? I'm sure they don't come in and be like, this is my third time taking the class. Probably not, you know? And then the other thing to keep in mind is maybe 
you're suffering from a little bit of the Dunning-Kruger effect. Have you heard of it? Probably, but if not, I'll summarize. The Dunning-Kruger effect occurs when a person's lack of knowledge and skill in a certain area causes them to overestimate their own competence. So someone else may not really be all that competent, but overestimating how they feel that they are prepared for a class. And then this may be you. By contrast, this effect also drives those who excel in a given area to think the task is simple for everyone, leading, to, leading them to underestimate their abilities. So you just might be such a perceptive, strong student that you have an awareness that the depth of mathematics is very vast, what you know is very little, and you might be just overly harsh with yourself and your assessment of your abilities. I don't know. I think the real thing to focus in on is you feel like other people are smarter than you. Are they actually doing better in the class though? Are their exam scores a lot better? If so, that's okay. Ask them what they do. Ask them how they study. Use them as an example to learn from and imitate and try to see if you apply their study skills and their habits. If it will, why won't it help you improve your score in the class? But if they're not actually doing better than you, then who cares? Don't worry about them. Just because you feel that way, change how you feel, okay? Change how you think, change how you feel. If they're not doing better than you, keep it pushing, move on. Life's too short. Be happy while you're in school. Do not stress. It goes by like this. So don't be miserable <laughs> while you're studying. Don't overload yourself. Don't be in a rush. Savor this time, okay? And that's all my advice to you for now. Thank you, Josue, for your questions. I love doing these episodes, but I can't unless you guys submit questions. So Josue, DM me on Instagram. You can do that. You can also send me an email, mathtvwithprofessorv at gmail.com. You can just leave a comment down below if you don't mind everybody seeing your question. And also, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. I love reading them. You can also catch me on Instagram and TikTok, Math TV with Professor V. And should you need full-length video lectures on Calc 1, 2, 3, Pre-Calc, Stats, Trig, I got you. Check out my YouTube channel. Thank you for all your support. I'll be back soon.